Welcome to Race Face TV and part two of our special interview with up and coming Virginia based racer Minnie Tyrell. If you missed part one, you can catch that on raceface.tv on demand. But for right now, let's take a look at part two of that interview. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit. Let's talk about last year, 2018. Um, major stepping stone for you. Um, I, we, as we talked about a little bit earlier, you made your car's debut, where you actually went out qualified second and finished 11th. And then you went to that big race at South Boston. And I was actually privileged enough to be able to come and spend the weekend with you guys. And I mean, the, the top racers on the East Coast were at that race. And man, you had a strong car and you, I mean, you were blowing me away with how well you were running and what a freaky type of accident that actually ended up ending your day. But it, it had to be satisfying to you to be able to be out there against the Josh Berries, the Lee Pulliams and, you know, the McCarthy's and all of those guys. And I mean, you, you were in the mix the whole race. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it was it was very cool being at that racetrack. And I remember, you know, I look at Josh Berry and Lee Pulliam as almost like crowned king of late model racing. Um, and I, I look up to them and I, I look and I'm like, you know, I want to be as good as, as them one day and be able to be as fortunate as them one day in a late model stock car. And I remember I remember getting door to door with Josh Berry and actually being a little bit even faster than him at one point. And I was like, Dude, there's no way. And I was like, I'm, I'm racing against a junior motorsports driver that has won many races and is definitely a well-known name across, you know, the East Coast. And uh, also getting up next to Lee Pulliam and actually eventually passing him and then having him run behind us for a while and then obviously getting wrecked out. But, um, yeah, I, I think it was it was, it was crazy uh, running up again there. I think I was running about top 10 toward the end of the race. And, about eighth or ninth where we got wrecked out. But it was just, it was an unfortunate event. Uh, two cars tangled in front of me and then the one went up the racetrack and I was just right here and he came down and hit my right front. And unfortunately I couldn't do nothing and shot me into the tire wall. So yeah, actually, if, I, know, remember, if I remember correctly, it was under yellow that he actually rolled down the track and hit you as you were trying to come underneath him. I think they'd already spun, the yellow had came out you were going down below them and he rolled down the track and hit you in the back right quarter panel, if, if I remember correctly. I, I believe, I don't know if it was under yellow, but I just remember him coming up here and um, not to say that it was really his fault because it wasn't really his fault. And it's, it, you can't, it's hard to control a car when it's spinning, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's, I think it's a, he could have maybe just tried to let it, the car spin out a little bit more. Um, so he tried to save it, and unfortunately, I was just right there when he tried to save the car. Um, so, you know, it just – it happens. It's a racing deal. Um, nothing to get angry over, um, and nothing to get upset about. It just – it happens. It's racing. You're going to go through these experiences, too, if you start short track racing, and it's just what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, at, at, like I said, it's all about performance. Sometimes you don't get the results mm -hmm. that you wanted. But the bottom line is the performance that day was off the chart. I was I was actually blown away. Absolutely. Now, the one thing that I learned being there with you guys for a few days was that you have surrounded yourself with an amazing support staff. And that support staff is actually, you know, led by your mom and your dad. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Uh my support staff is definitely my mom and my dad. They uh they do the world imaginable for me. Um if they if they could buy me the world they would um and we're not we don't come from a family with a lot of money um they uh they do everything in the world possible that they can for me um and yeah they uh they uh they support me as much as they can and mom you know does my social media things and she posts for me and um she helps me in every way shape or form at the racetrack and so does my father and he's the one who actually you know gets me at the racetrack and obviously with the help of our sponsors and things like that too. 
Um, so, you know, it, it, it's hard um, getting to the racetrack sometimes and, uh, you know, always looking for extra partners to come aboard, which would be great and help us a lot out, um, help us out, help us out a lot with that. So, um, you know, I think uh, they, they lead us along and uh, Brandon Butler is my crew chief and uh, has been with us since I, I uh, after I, I, I turned 10 in that season from Shenandoah on, he's been with us and Dan Gibbons as well, and uh, Joshua Ray is on our crew, Jimmy Hamrick. Um, and I can go on the list of people that are on our crew that help us out. And, um, you know, Tommy Buckley is, is a huge help too. Um, you know, I can go on and on about everybody who supports us, but, you know, um, the main the main crew is, is truly incredible and in what they do for me. Um, I, I don't think I appreciate them enough or at least tell them enough how much I care about them because uh, – they truly do everything they can possible for me. Now you've got a special relationship, I think, with your crew chief, Brandon Butler. And, you mm -hmm. know, seeing Brandon work on the car and, and was a, a, an amazing driver in his own, his own yeah. right um, in, in, his, in his day and probably could jump in that car today and go out and compete with anybody. But I, I, I watched yeah. him at South Boston and very meticulous about what he did. And all during that day, he... He kept making changes on the car, especially the day before the race and practice, and just got it a little faster and a little faster and kind of got to that to that edge, if you would, and then thought, well, let's go here to see if we get a little bit faster, but that knew exactly when to kind of bring it back in. And like I said, on race day, you had a fast piece. And, and Dan Gibbons, what another great guy. I mean, um, I mean, we were we were able to go out and do a little go-kart racing uh, the yeah. before the race, which was amazing. I had, I had an awesome time there. <laughs> And I, I, I just want to give a shout out to all the people on your team, your mom, your dad, Brandon, you know, Dan, and everybody else that's involved. I mean, you, you, you've got a great crew around you, and I think that's very fortunate. But let's switch gears a little bit right now. And let's talk about something that I think a lot of people have no idea about Mini Tyrell, and that <laughs> is that you're quite the hockey player. So where did that well, come from? Maybe I I, uh, I I enjoy hockey. Uh, it's one of it's probably my second favorite sport. Um, I like to do it over the weekends, and I go and play for the Potomac Patriots up here in Woodbridge, Virginia. And um, you know, so I play in a house league, and I like to have fun. I I made some uh, incredible friends, probably some lifetime friends through hockey. Um, I started playing hockey when I was about seven years old, um, and I really enjoyed it. And you know, I, I just kept with it as long as racing. And um, so I, I look at racing as obviously number one, but um, I, I, I do truly enjoy hockey and um, I'm not, I'm not bad at it too. So uh, hey, yeah, I enjoy it. Like the other day, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's, you, you, you gotta be <laughs> somewhat good if you come down and you have a hat trick. Yeah. We had a hat trick and uh, a couple games ago. And then my last game, I got a goal from, from defense on the blue line. So that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that, that was fun. I enjoy hockey. I like playing and um, I like to protect my goalie who is, uh, he is, I don't know exactly how tall he is, but I want to say 6'3", 6'2", um, and he's, he's deaf. And when he gets on his knees in the goal crease, we're eye to eye. So, you know, I look at him and I'm like, good save. And I always give him a pat on the head, you know, when he makes a save. And um, I always tell him, great job, give him knuckles. And um, if anybody touches him, oh, you know, I, I get very protective and, you know, I'll immediately go over there and, you know, uh, either throw him off or do a little bit more than just throw him off. But, uh, you know, uh, so I like to protect him. And I, I made friends, Max and JP, who – we are going to be lifetime friends of my own and uh, truly some, uh, and I think we have a, an incredible team. And I think each one of those kids is, has a special place in, uh, in my, in my heart and my, uh, my life. So uh, I think I, I've truly uh, had hockey is uh, one of my best sports. All right. So let's, let's talk about one other thing in your off track performance. And that's all about Minnie's mission. And I know yeah, that every absolutely. time we talk about that, we that, that twinkle comes in your eye and you get that big smile on your face. And <laughs> that's something that's very dear to your heart. And, and, and here's mm -hmm. where I think, you know, as we all know that if you're gonna have a professional racing career, you've gotta be good on the track, but you also have to be special off the track. And yes, sir. what you've done off the track at your age is literally amazing. I mean, I don't know another Thank word to, to actually put with yeah. that. And it all started, 
at the age of six years old. So tell us a little bit about Minnie's mission. Yeah, Minnie's mission started uh, when I was obviously six years old. Um, my friend Ella Day, who, uh, who was seven at the time, had a brain tumor. And um, I, I was at a party at their house and um, I had overheard the parents talking about expenses and things like that. They were hard. And um, I'm sure anytime you get a kid who is sick um, and in the hospital, you're going to have a hard time with things. Um, and obviously, it's a hard time when it, your whole family just impacts everybody. Um, so I overheard that. And, you know, at the time, six, you know, I kind of didn't really understand what was going on. So I came home and I sat at my kitchen table. It's still here today and was like, you know, hey, hey, dad, what can I what can I do to help? Like, what can we do? to help kids who are in need and have a sickness called cancer. And um, obviously pediatric cancer. And what people don't realize is adult cancer is focused on 90% of the time and the other 10% is just kids, um, kids cancer, which is pediatric cancer that it's focused on. Um, so that's 10% and we really need to bump that up to 50-50 um, because you know, obviously when, when kids go to the hospital um, and they need, you know, to take drugs and things like that to help cure them, normally they're be giving adult drugs, which is not good for them and also obviously can cause other problems. Um, so what we need to do is uh, we need to obviously uh, raise money in, um, for cancer, pediatric cancer research, and really get these, uh, these kids with uh, taken care of. Um, so yeah, I've raised about a half a million dollars now. I believe the exact number is about four hundred fifty-seven thousand uh, thousand dollars for pediatric cancer research. And um, obviously, uh, my dream one day is to be able to raise enough money, or at least have enough money one day to build a hospital. Um, and I tell you what, if it, if it's had, if it was everything I had and the shirt off my back, I'd do it to uh, to make a hospital for somebody. Um, in need. So uh, I, I truly do have a special place in my heart for helping people. I love helping people no matter what way, shape or form it is. Um, I like, you know, giving back to my community and uh, truly taking life as, as a gift and not something that you take for granted. Well, we know that you've made a special friend through this pediatric cancer deal. And that happens to be NASCAR Hall of Famer, Jeff Gordon. So let's take a quick <laughs> short look at an interview that you did with Jeff on Fox 46 <clears throat> on Giving Tuesday. Chair Charlotte want to raise $10 million to be able to keep our title as the most giving uh, Tuesday community ever. And today we're excited to have NASCAR legend Jeff Gordon, uh, along with a new friend of, uh, of ours, uh, Minnie Timmy Tyrell, who's also been raising money for pediatric cancer since he was six years old. Uh, guys, first, both of you welcome. I'm glad Thank you're here. You. Jeff, Thank we, want to, we want you. to talk to you about your mission and what you've done just even in the last couple of weeks. But just before we came on to air, I think you're just as amazed at, uh, at, at Timmy here with you about what he's done in a Thank short life. This kid right here inspires all of us. Uh, at a young age, uh, he had a friend who was diagnosed with, with cancer, and that inspired him to want, he, he was racing at a young age. He said, I'm going to take my winnings when I race, and I'm going to raise more awareness and, and try to get other people to contribute. And our foundations got together. And how much have you raised now? Uh, we just hit the $450,000. $450,000 oh, since he was like yes, six or seven years old. It's an amazing <laughs> yeah. story. Uh, and that inspires, you know, our foundation yeah. to want to give back and do more. And, uh, of course, you know, Giving Tuesday and what Charlotte did last year was amazing. Yeah. We are thrilled to be a part of that. I think our foundation raised $72,000, which I ra uh, matched. And then this year, between me and Minnie, so we're doing $85,000 match. And what are you going to do this year, I'm going to pledge uh, $10,000 that I raise in the future, and that's going to go to Levine, and we're going to contribute to Giving Tuesday. Woo! Look at you! <laughs> Well, Minnie, what was that like to actually be on that show with Jeff Gordon and talk a little bit about the bond that you guys have created that's still in effect today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jeff is a, he's a cool guy. And I tell you what, uh, he saw us on NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams on Channel 4. I want to say when I was eight years old. Um, and that's so when we started partnering with him was eight years old. And um so he called us and he said, uh, that's why, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Martinsville had such a special place in my heart. And this is why, um, because I met Jeff Gordon at Martinsville. And this is where we, we met together. Um, 
So he called us and uh, we were like, this can't be, you know, well, it was his managers, obviously. And they're like, yeah, this is, this can't be Jeff Gordon. Like, there's no way. And, you know, I'm thinking like, I didn't really watch NASCAR as much as I did, but I watched it and I knew who people were. And I was like, Jeff Gordon. I was like, that's, that's a pretty big dude. And so they wanted us to come and meet him at Martinsville Speedway. And uh, we did. And uh, so that was very cool. I got to spend, uh, normally when you go and meet these drivers, it's like a minute and a half to two minutes um, at most. And I got to actually spend about three hours with the guy, um, you know, all day pretty much while well, it was raining. So that's, that got lucky with the rain there. So I got to spend a lot of time with him and, and talk to him about what we did. We filmed some little commercials together for uh, Kick It and Kickball uh, tournaments that, that I've hosted for a while here. Um, yeah, so it was very cool meeting them. Um, you know, we still work together to this day. And, uh, you know, all the funds that, that go for research uh, get transferred through the Jeff Gordon Children's Foundation, and it all goes to cancer research. That's awesome. And I know that you were on the Steve Harvey show as well. So you got a lot of really cool publicity at a very young age. Yeah. So um, you talked a little bit about how much money that you've raised over a half a million dollars, almost a half a million dollars now. That, that, that's absolutely amazing. But let's now yeah. talk real quickly as we wrap the show up about your 2019 plans. Yeah, absolutely. 2019 will be a, uh, a great year, uh, I hope. Um, so we're Planning to run the uh, the full car store season. Now, I don't know if we're going to run the actual entire season. I know we're going to plan to run a few races at Dominion Raceway here in Thornburg, Virginia, and uh, get those under our belt a little bit. And uh, obviously, we're hoping that we get accepted in the Touring 12 uh, for the car store that will be running the full 12 um, points races. Uh, we don't know yet if we're accepted, but that'll give us uh, some special discounts here and there. So we'll, I hope that we get accepted to that. And so we pray to run a lot of the cars tour and just get as much experience as I, I need um, racing against some of these be the best drivers um, on the East Coast and in the nation in late model stock cars. So, yeah, we're hoping to run, you know, obviously the cars tour, uh, maybe go down and run a few races at Carteret County Speedway in North Carolina and Emerald Isle. And then um, obviously we're going to run Martinsville Speedway in September, and then um, probably make our way uh, again to uh, South Boston in the Cars Tour on November in November, and then uh, the Thanksgiving Classic in Southern National toward the end of the year. All right. Well, that sounds like a jam-packed year. Everybody, <laughs> keep your eye on this young man. I'm telling you, amazing talent. I don't care if he's 14 years Thank old or 24 years old. This kid can <laughs> drive a race car. So if you're a sponsor out there and you're looking for someone that you want to get connected with, not only to be on the track, but every all of the amazing stuff that Minnie has going on off the track. You can stay connected with Minnie on his website at minityrell.com. You can follow him on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash minityrell. Instagram, same thing, instagram.com forward slash minityrell, or even on twitter.com. Minnie, you got all the social media platforms covered. I want to thank you for being with us uh, tonight on this special show, our first show of 2019. And I want to give a special thanks to you for what you actually do off the track. I mean, that's well, something that actually comes from the heart. And I think that you kind of got that giving spirit uh, from your mom and dad. You know, I, I've been able to be Absolutely. around them a little bit. They're fantastic people. You've got a great family. All the best of luck in 2019. And I, I know that we're going to be having you back on Race Face Spotlight uh, probably three other times throughout the year. So fans, tune in. Many again, thanks for being with us. And as always, I encourage you to go out and support local racing in your community. And we'll see you back here on our next Race Face Spotlight. Everybody have a great evening.